Now we're welcome. Welcome. Go Bears tonight. How about this? I am Brad T. Proud to be your athletic director. I've been here 13 years. So this is actually my 14th signing class. Yeah, 14 signing classes already. And I tell you, I know Coach Brown is going to introduce all of the coaching staff, but I want to publicly thank them for all they do and bring great young men to our university. So coaches, thank y'all. It is a lot of work, as you know, and we don't have private jets that fly them back and forth to, to schools every day. They spend a lot of time in the car, a lot of time on sofas and couches at friends' homes to save us money, and they have worked extremely hard. And you're gonna see this signing class is incredible. I, I don't. I don't know where we're ranked. Uh, I've read a little bit on, on Twitter that we're number one in the conference, which would mean we're probably a top five in the country, which is pretty remarkable. It's incredible what these, these men have done for us, and we're just so proud of that. I need to tell you that uh, this is our 2020 signing class party for football, and it is sponsored by First Security Bank. And so we appreciate it. We appreciate First Security Bank. Uh, Johnny Adams was going to be here and he could not come tonight. He had a, a personal matter he needed to attend to, so I wanted to thank them publicly for their help with this signing day event. We've got Fat Daddy's uh, food tonight, so please partake in the food and beverage, and we appreciate you being here. You don't want to hear from me, I know that, so without further ado, let's hear from our third year head coach, Nathan Brown. Thank you, Brad. Well, first of all, uh, thanks everybody for coming out on kind of a gross, nasty day. Uh, this is a celebration, one of, of what we've been able to accomplish as a university and as a coaching staff uh, with, with the young men we're about to bring into this program. Look, this is like Christmas Day for coaches. You know, the football season is, is fun. You know, you get, you get 12, 11, 12 games guaranteed every year. Obviously, we plan on playing in the postseason year in and year out. Uh, but the second best season to a lot of people is recruiting season. And that's what, uh, what's so great and fun about this and this event uh, is a lot of time and effort. And uh, it's a combination of hard work, uh, a time commitment, uh, a lot of time spent away from home, uh, and, then, and then obviously putting, putting our best foot forward with the, the community of Conway and the university as a whole. Uh, this is more than just football. This is more than just athletics. Uh, we're recruiting young men uh, to come be a part of this university and get a great first class degree and play some football along the way. You know, that's, that's the way we recruit them and that's obviously what, what we want to do. First thing before I, I want to dive into this class and, and talk a little bit about these guys is I want to thank some people uh, that make this possible. Uh, look, it, it, this is a, uh, a never ending process. So when you think about recruiting, you think about signing day, you think about, you know, players picking up hats and putting them on and all that, that, that jazz. Uh, but recruiting is a 24 uh, hour a day, 365 days a year uh, uh, a deal. And, and look, like tomorrow our coaching staff is gonna take a breather, but I can promise you by Monday of next week, we'll be thinking about the class of 2021. I mean, we'll be organizing junior days. Uh, it, it, it's already in process. And, and that's the thing about Today is it's a lot of hard work wrapped into a day, um, day and, and, and now we're fortunate enough to have a December signing day as well, which is, which is a good thing too. Uh, but but I, wanna, I wanna recognize some people. First thing I wanna do is uh, I want our coaches and staff to come up here real fast. Uh, everybody, everybody, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Please, please. Come on, come on up, come on Dalton, let's go. So uh, th this group of men deserve more than just a, just a hand and a clap. They've, they've put more, more time and effort, one, to uh, represent the logo that all of you are wearing right now. Uh, we, we, we take great pride in that as a, as a coaching staff of, of not only uh, putting, the, putting our best foot forward in, in people's homes or their schools, um, but, 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 but giving UCA a positive light no matter where we go. And uh, these men right here obviously, uh, obviously do that on a day in and day out basis. Um, and, and do a phenomenal job of that. Just in case, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you who they are and the position they coach. Uh, that way they're kinda like, you know, football coaches are kinda like players, you know, a lot of times they're in the press box or they're yelling on the sideline. You don't get a chance to really see them in depth or, or, or put a name to a face. So 
uh, what, a, what a great group of men this is and uh, a great deal. Start out on uh, this end right here, Coach Ken Collins uh, is our offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach, um, and he recruits the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, coach Gunnar Boykin right here uh, is our offensive line coach, also our recruiting coordinator. So Coach Boykin wears two hats, um, and, and that's kind of the deal when you get into coaching, you think you're just going to coach football. but. A lot of the reason why we were able to sign this, this group of guys we were able to sign is because of his organization on recruiting weekends, official and unofficial weekends, um, as well as, as putting together plans uh, day in and day out to put us in the best position for it, to be as efficient as possible um, as, a, as a coaching staff. So Gunner does a great job. He recruits the state of Mississippi. Coach Jacob Sisk is now our safeties coach. Uh, moved him from our outside linebackers and bandits coach to safeties coach moving forward this year. Jacob recruits East Texas. Coach Chaz Scales. Uh, is our, our corners coach. He coached safeties last year. Now going to move him to coach corners and, and kind of uh, work, work oversee the secondary. Um, coach, Scales, uh, coach Scales does a, a great job. He recruits Central Tennessee and North Alabama. Also, also doubles with North Louisiana. So uh, doesn't, you know, he's got a couple different spots that he hits. Uh, coach Brooks Hollinsworth, fan favorite, tight ends coach, assistant head coach. He recruits the, uh, he recruits the state of Arkansas uh, and does a phenomenal job with that. Matter of fact, uh, him and Coach Williams, I'll, I'll get to Coach Williams in a second, they recruit the state of Arkansas. Uh, we led the Division I uh, uh, race this year in the state of Arkansas with eight Division I full scholarship signees. Yep. Which is a big deal. So that's, that's a big deal. I know, I know the other universities had, I think one had four, one had one. So you're talking about, you can combine the, some of them for a couple years and they don't hit ours. Uh, Coach Nelson Gunnell. Nelson uh, is actually finishing, uh, finishing up in May w w uh, as a graduate assistant for us. Nelson will be our new running backs coach starting in May. So yeah, give him a hand. <laughs> Excited about Nelson. Nelson wears a bunch of different hats as well. Does a great job for us. He'll recruit Houston. Um, that's where he played high school football. Has a lot of connections down there. Coach Tony Davis is our defensive line coach. Coach Davis has been here for a while. We know his deal. He, work, he recruits the Panhandle of Florida, South Alabama, and in the New Orleans area. So he's down on the coast. Uh, coach Ryan Howard is our wide receivers coach and special teams coordinator. Uh, coach Howard uh, recruits Central Florida. So uh, he hits the Orlando and Tampa area, obviously, uh, and, then, and then dabbles a little bit in Birmingham, where he's from. Coach Chad Williams is our linebackers coach and uh, defensive coordinator. And Coach Chad Williams, uh, Coach, Coach Williams recruits South Arkansas, also hits a lot of the state of Alabama where he's from, hits into Georgia as well. Um, so so uh, that's our coaches. And then Dalton Withrow on the end is our, our director of equipment operations. He does not get on the road, but he does swag out our guys and makes them love UCA with the way they look. So that's a big part in recruiting now. That's important. Yeah, that's a big deal. Also, come on Tadlock. Kellen Tadlock's one of our graduate assistants and offensive quality control guys. Does a great job assisting Coach, uh, Coach Boykin with the offensive line. Handles a lot of the on-campus recruiting for us. Does a great job. He's from the state of Mississippi, uh, which in turn I think our second leading uh, state we signed kids from was Mississippi. A lot of that's because of the relationship Coach Boykin and, and Coach Tadlock have in that state. So that was big for us. Steph, come on out. <laughs> Steph was waiting for a grand entrance. <laughs> So Stephanie Crane obviously is the one that keeps us ticking. She is, uh, she's the one that keeps the boat rowing. When we say bears in the boat, she keeps it rowing because she keeps us on the road. She keeps us in budget and then she keeps us, uh, she keeps us online, you know, and does a great job. She's been doing it for years now and uh, we couldn't do it without her. I promise you, she does more, uh, more than you can imagine and she puts up with our crap. So uh, <laughs> she, does a, she does a great job keeping us leveled. So, but you guys give these guys a hand. They deserve every bit of it. I also want to, uh, can y'all hear me fine? Is that breaking up or is we good? It's on and off. It's on and off? Sorry, I guess I need to stand still. Uh, so also uh, want to recognize Nick Winger right here. You guys turn around, Nick Wave. So Nick, Nick does a great job. Do I need this or can I just talk loud or is this important? I guess if I hold it up like this. Stay behind it. Yeah, Nick, so, you know, social media is so, social media, one, two, three. Everybody hear me fine? Is that better? All right, I'll just have to stand still. Uh, Nick does a great job for us. 
you look at all the social media stuff on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you see uh, uh, the, the pages that players put up and prospects put up and, and prospective student athletes. Nick does a lot of those graphic works for us, does a lot of the video work for us, um, and he's invaluable in this process. So y'all give Nick Wanger a hand, guys. Also want to thank Ryan Lajeunesse. Ryan, wave your hand. Ryan is our, our team chaplain, and uh, Ryan spends a lot of Saturdays up there. Uh, we, we, we like to show every part of our program and what we, we offer and what we're about. And Ryan does a phenomenal job with our young men and, and, and the families and, and, and giving them an opportunity to talk and speak with him. And, and Ryan travels with us. He invests in our young men that are current players, future players, and uh, that's a big asset to us. So I just want to thank Ryan for all his help. Y'all give him a hand real fast. And then, obviously, Dr. Teague and his staff, um, Dr. Teague and then President Davis just walked in. Look, th th those two men, Dr. Teague and President Davis, uh, any given Saturday, drop what they're doing. They come speak to our, our, our student athletes uh, that we're recruiting because it's important to them, right? It's important to them. Uh, they know the type of young men that we're trying to bring into this program and into this university. Like I said, it's bigger than just football. It's bigger than just athletics. It's about who we're bringing into this university and representing this logo. And they come, and, and, and sometimes some of the biggest hits is, is uh, the president of the university and the athletic director coming and spending five, ten minutes with, with the families and prospects. And that's, that's invaluable to us, so you guys give them a hand, and, and Dr. Teague and his staff. That's awesome. All right, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. But, uh, but there's a lot of people to thank because there's, there's a lot that goes into something like this. When you, have to, when you bring 23 new young men into a program, uh, there's a lot of time, effort, paperwork, uh, travel, expenses, um, uh, you know, organization involved in putting together a, a unit and a team like this. Uh, and, and these young men don't think that we didn't do our, our homework on them. You know, the first thing we look at is, uh, is the, uh, is the, uh, is the uh, Twitter accounts, you know, make sure that they're, they're, they're the right, right fit for us. Make sure that they're, the, they're the, right, uh, the right fit for the university, for the program. Then we, then we get to know them and the counselors and all those things. So, so it's so important as we're going through this to, uh, to, put, the right, to put the right unit and team together um, in recruiting. And that's where you build your program is off recruiting. Yeah, I did. I failed to miss, mention the wives. I'm sorry. I messed up. Like, is there any, how many wives are in here? I know Jessica's here. I saw Kathy. Uh, I don't know if Ken, if your wife's here, I don't know. Any, these, these ladies right here, y'all give them a hand because Stephanie, uh, Ryan's wife. Yeah. I think I said it, I think I said it last year, but like, like Ryan's a perfect example. Ryan will kiss Stephanie on the cheek and he'll leave for two weeks almost. I mean, going to, going to Orlando and Tampa and just recruiting, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough gig and, and we appreciate them. Uh, you know, uh, what they do for us and, and, and the, the sacrifices they make. So we appreciate that. Now, to this, uh, to this team, to this, uh, to this signing class, uh, an exciting group. One thing we wanted to continue to do, again, we had a great season last year, but what's going to make us push to the next level? What's going to help us, uh, you know, make, make a push late in December in the, into the playoffs? Well, it's, it's, it's size one and it's speed two. You know, it's not hard for UCA to continue to get speed. We've proven that year in and year out that we can recruit speed. Uh, you know, so, so that, that's something that we feel like we can hang our hat on year in and year out. The first thing we wanted to get was, was size. Guys that, one, are already physically big, or two, can eat their way into being big. They have, <laughs> they have the frame. In other words, they have the frame to be a, a big guy. Um, so uh, the way we're going to kind of set this up is... Uh, is I'm going to go over the, the eight mid-year guys that, that we signed that are already on campus um, and going through workouts and uh, the, you know, handling, uh, handling the day-to-day -day grind already of, uh, of being, uh, being here at UCA and going through workouts. Uh, first person I want to mention is, is Christian Kane. Christian Kane is a safety from Northwest Mississippi. He's originally from Grenada, Mississippi. Uh, Christian is a, uh, is a, is a six-foot-two. He's around 195, 200 pounds. Uh, but if you, if, you, if you look at the way he's got, way he plays, he's got a lot of length. He's a kid that can be a very good size, physical safety. Uh, he, he's got, got great instincts on the, on the football. Um, he's, go, he's going to, uh, he's gonna be, be a guy in the backfield that, that you looked at those Illinois State safeties that they played with. 
uh, that's what he kind of looks like. He's got, he's got great range, but he's also got the ability to come down and make tackles. And that's what we're looking for. And Christian's a kid, especially with the departure of Juan Jackson, he's, he's the type of kid that can come in and give you an immediate impact guy right away so you're not having to rely on maybe a freshman to come in and do that. Uh, but Christian, Christian is, a, is, a, is a great kid. He was an all, you can see his accolades, you know, he was, he was an all-Mississippi player, had four interceptions, I believe, uh, a big tackle guy for Northwest Mississippi, one of their best defensive players, and uh, is a kid that we're going to hang our hat on for years to come uh, as, we, uh, as we continue to build around on this defense. Size, talked about size. Jalen Bedell, again, we did not lose a defensive lineman uh, from last year's class. Jalen Bedell, 6'2", 315 pounds. Again, he is, he, he is what you're looking for to plug the middle. I, I, you know, I've watched him move around for about three weeks now, and he, he, he weighs 315 pounds, but he moves around like he weighs 285 pounds. And that's what's encouraging about a guy like that. He was a heavily recruited guy, especially early on. Uh, Coach Davis did a great job, and, and Coach Boykin uh, recruiting the area, but, but uh, selling him on our historically good defensive line play. Again, we consistently have one of the best defensive lines in the Southland Conference, um, and, and, and Jalen fits that mold and, and, and what we're looking for. You, again, you can see he's going to warn a double team, but he also has the ability at 315 pounds to be a playmaker. You don't see that very often. Uh, Jalen's a kid that we're going to expect to be an immediate guy to come in uh, again and make plays. You'll see his athletic ability right here. I mean, he's got good twitch. He gets excited too, <laughs> which is good. But Jalen's going to be an immediate impact guy on the, on the front. Cameron Cuevas is a, uh, is a 5 foot 11, 190 pound corner. Uh, you'll see his phys physicality. Watch his physicality. He comes up and he's not afraid to hit you. Again, he'll do it in several different clips right here. Again, he's, he's a good football player. But what you've got to continue to do and you've got to continue to get is physical corner play. We feel great about Robert Rochelle. We get Duke Upshaw back who got injured the first game of the year. We, DeAndre Lamont was our starter the last nine games. So we've got a good base coming back, but we needed some experience and someone that could come in and play immediately. Cameron Cuevas fits that mold. Again, watching him run around, move around, he's a kid that has the physical ability to play right away and a kid that's going to add, add quick depth to our secondary room and coach scales um, and what we're trying to do back there. But again, you can see he has quick twitch to the ball. Um, he's a kid that, that, that we're going to be able to build, build around. Coach Howard uh, had, the, had the fun task as a special teams coordinator of replacing the punter and snapper this year, which, is, which you don't think about is a big deal until you, you don't have one, and that's a big deal. Uh, we, we, we found Siren Hughes Ford um, from Coffeyville Community College. Again, Siren has a long body. So, so when you look at NFL punters, and I'm not saying Siren's eventually going to be an NFL punter, but he has the body type to do that. He's got really good length, a big leg. Uh, he's, he's the type of kid that, that can grow into being even a bigger kid. Uh, you can see great hang time. He started his, his playing career at the University of Colorado, red-shirted at Colorado, uh, I guess got bogged down for whatever reason, decided to transfer to Coffeyville Community College. Had a great, great one year there. Great thing about Searing is, is he's got three years of eligibility. So we take a mid-year kid that's got three years of eligibility uh, to play, and now we don't have to worry about punter for the next three, three years. And that's, that's an encouraging thing, especially as a head coach. That's something you don't think about. Again, these, these clips don't do it justice. He's got a great hang time. Also, what you don't see in these clips is Searing is a great kickoff guy. Siren, Siren's a kid that averaged 80% of his kickoffs in the end zone, uh, which, is, which is definitely an asset to have a dual guy that can do both. I'm um, so excited about him. Snapper, so here's the beauty of this. I mentioned this at Bearbackers a couple weeks ago. S Siren, Hughes Force from, uh, from Coffeyville. His snapper, Justin Keegers, is from Coff Coffeyville Community College. So the cool thing about that is the rapport. Specialists have a great rapport about them. They, they spend a lot of time together. They work together. Uh, you know, Justin's a kid that is physically one of the better looking deep snappers we've had here. He's six foot one, 215 pounds. He's a true weight room guy, really likes the weight room, spends a lot of time there, has a great body type. As a matter of fact, looks a lot like a linebacker. Um, so, so our expectation is maybe we, our playmaking ability will go up at that position. The ability to get him out right here, you'll see him make a tackle in the open field. Again, a kid that, that has done it for, uh, for one year with Searing, also has three years of eligibility as well. So you've got a punter and a snapper that we were able to find that both have three years of eligibility left. They're on our campus right now. They'll go through spring ball. 
Deuce Wise, someone I'm very excited about. Deuce Wise is a kid that we gray shirted. So Deuce Wise graduated in the class of 2019, okay? So when I say gray shirted, he basically uh, did not enroll in college until this, this January. Okay, so we put him on scholarship as a mid-year signee, uh, did not go through, go through school in, fall, in the fall, so his clock did not start until he got on campus this January. So he is, he is basically like an early enrollee freshman. Uh, so this is a good deal. Deuce played quarterback at Northside. Obviously, Deuce is not going to be a quarterback for us. Uh, we feel great about Braylon Smith and our quarterback situation. Uh, but Deuce is a, is a great athlete. Again, you talk to a lot of the 7A coaches around the state, he's one of the best players they've seen uh, over the last five, six years at just being a playmaker. You can see he's got the ability in the open field, a very, very strong kid. He is going to be a big kid. He is, he's already in the weight room, uh, you know, working out with Coach Fodio, his staff, changing his body already. He's a kid that's going to be an immediate impact kid for us uh, that, that for future is going to, going to add a lot of depth to our, our running back room. You look at his stats on those sheets, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, you look at his total yards and the number of touchdowns, and really that's in play in two years. You look at him, he's how elusive he is, and, and again, in the open field. Not, not going uh, to be the kid that we signed to be a burner, but he's going to be a kid that we signed that's going to be very, very productive, and he's going to be productive really fast here, especially with the opportunity at hand with the departure of Carlos Blackman uh, and, and, and needing to fill, fill that bigger back role. Deuce has a chance to be that guy. William Mayo, again, we talked about size. William is a big lad. He is six foot five, 325 pounds. That's probably a little light right now, Coach Boykin, wouldn't you say, 325? Yeah, yeah. he's, probably, he's probably, probably about 335 range. Uh, but here's the cool part about that is uh, he's, a, he's one of our heavier offensive linemen, uh, but, but he's also one of our fastest 10-yard burst offensive linemen. So when I say that, that tells you about his explosion. Again, he's got the size that you're looking for to play in December. Again, he's got the, got the athletic ability to get out. Again, you can see him on a screen pass right here. He gets out. I mean, when he touches you, you move. And that's, that, that's what you're looking for when we're trying to sign these offensive linemen. Here's the best part about it is you're able to go to Sylvan Hills High School right down the road, 30 minutes from the house, and get a guy like this who had the, had the ability to graduate early and is enrolled, uh, enrolled in school right now as we speak and going through workouts as an early enrollee freshman. Uh, so so he's, the, he's one of two early enrollee freshman offensive linemen, uh, which is huge for us because that gives us an opportunity to get them here, get them in our system, teach them, but also get them in the weight room uh, for an extra semester before the summer starts. Derek Hout. Same situation. Again, he's our eighth mid-year signee. So Derek is from uh, Dr. Phillips High School in Orlando, Florida. Coach Howard did a great job uh, recruiting Derek. Uh, we got Derek. We, we project Derek as a guard or a tackle. Again, he's six foot four, 300 pounds. So he's got the size you're looking for. Very athletic frame. Very, very strong kid at, at this point in his career. Um, he's a kid that, that, that you can build around along with William, especially them getting here early. Uh, to, to put us, put, continue to push our, our depth up at the offensive line unit. You know, again, I said we needed size or guys that could potentially have size in a year or two. These two already have the size you're looking for. I would say after a, after a spring semester and a summer, Derek will probably be a 305, 310 pound kid uh, that's, that's measuring at 6'4", whereas William's in the same boat where he's a 6'5", 330 pound kid. Um, so we've got to continue. Look, when I walk in the offensive line room, I want to feel small. And I'm starting to feel that way with some of the guys we put together in the last couple classes. Um, and, and those two are no exception to that. So very excited about that. A lot of accolades, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, good players in that, in that group, um, and, and, and a group that, we're, that is already in season and working out and going through spring ball uh, as we speak. Um, so very excited about them. Uh, the next group I'm, gonna, I'm going to announce are uh, some of these guys we signed in December, some of them we signed today. Um, but these are the high school, basically they'll enroll this summer. Um, so very excited about these guys. I'll start out with obviously the quarterback. You always start with quarterback, right? Uh, Hunter Lloyd. Um, Hunter is a kid uh, that's, that's uh, coach's son. Uh, his dad is the head coach at Rogers High School. Hunter was a kid that was very heavily recruited back in the spring. 
Okay, uh, in the spring when we uh, when we're going out, uh, we did not think that uh, that that uh, we would have a shot at a guy like Hunter Lloyd. Had offers from Arkansas State, Louisiana Monroe, uh, among others, um, and 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 Hunter uh, just by the grace of God fell to us. And he's he's a kid that's uh, got the body type to really. Uh, to really have the potential to be one of the better quarterbacks we've had here. You know, you look at his throwing motion, how quick he gets the ball out. Uh, he's got the ability to have dual threat capabilities, so he can tuck the ball and run. Uh, I believe he's, he's, he's a three-star rated player um, by most of the organizations. Um, but he's a kid that really has great anticipation and a feel for the game. That's what you look for. And Coach Collins looks for that in, in, in quarterbacks, is, is a guy that has great feel and anticipation of the game. You can't coach that. Uh, so being a coach's son and someone that's been around it, he's a gym rat, really loves the game. I mean, that's, it was easy to fall in love with Hunter. Wouldn't that be a, another player that if you had to make him a halfback? Because I remember watching him run. He, uh, I mean, he's a, he could be just as great as a halfback. Well, I hope we have enough other guys where we don't have to do that. <laughs> You'll see. I think I think we got I think we got some other ones that start with Tristan Smith actually. But yes, Hunter. But to have a guy that can do that is a game changer. And you see some of the best teams and the best programs. You saw it in the national championship games. Uh, you know those quarterbacks that can make runs. I mean that's a difference maker. Tristan Smith, one of the one of the heavier recruited kids we've we've signed here. I um, mean my time here. Uh, he, had, he had some early offers from Power 5 schools. I ended up with a lot of group of fives, Southland offers. Trison's a 5'10", 215-pound back, very compact back. If you remember uh, a name back in the uh, early, uh, early 2000s, mid-2000s, named Kentrell Rogers from Fordyce. Reminds me a lot of him, you know, just a compact, thick body player. Uh, that, that finds a way to get done. He's from Duncanville High School. Duncanville, I think, lost one game in the last two years. Uh, so he's part of a winning program. He's a, he was their lead back. He was a kid that was, was a district player of the year. Um, he's a guy that they leaned heavily on to have their success. Uh, I think, where's Nelson at? How many half, second halves did he play in this year? Yeah, so he only played the second half one time in the regular In the regular season, he only had to play in the second half one time. So when you look at his statistics, Look at his senior season statistics. Most of that's first half work, which is pretty amazing. Um, so, you know that that that's a testament to how good Duncanville High School is. But again, you know if he play if he's playing two halves of football, he's probably a 2,500 yard rusher for his senior year. Um, but but this is a kid that you can build around again with the departure of Carlos. You add a Deuce Wise. You add you add a Trison Smith to that mix along with who we feel like is a pretty good unit already and and Cameron Myers, Kier Crossley. Uh, Marshawn Douglas from last year, uh, we, feel, we feel really good about who we have coming back. So excited about that. Y'all want some more receivers? We've got some more. Because we've got a pretty good unit of receivers already here. Uh, Jared Long is no exception to that. Jared Long reminds me a lot of Lawan Winningham. Uh, has that body type. Probably a little bit better looking kid than even Lawan is. Um, which is which is hard to say, but Jared was a very heavily recruited kid um, out of the private school system in in Mississippi. Coach Boykin did a great job establishing a relationship with him, and coach, obviously uh, he fell in love with Coach Collins and Coach Howard when he came up here. But a big frame kid. This kid's this kid's long now. This kid's very very long and has has big play capability. He's one of those uh, guys like Tyler Hudson, like Lawan and Winningham. If you throw the ball in his vicinity, he's going to come down with it. He's a very good 50-50 ball catcher. Um, so, again, let's keep adding those guys to those quarterbacks we got because they, they can make you look good. I'm, a, I'm living proof of that. Having good receivers can make a quarterback look really good. <laughs> and Jared Long is that guy. His statistics are, are, are obviously, uh, you know, speak for themselves. But, again, you can see right here, you can watch it again. He has, he has the ability, if you want to go one-on-one, -on -one, he, he'll, make, he'll make you hurt. He'll make you pay. Just a very, very special, special individual, special player. And again, he, he, was, he was an all-state performer. He was one of the, again, you'll look on those statistics, you're going to see player of the year, player of the year in their district. You know, all-state, he, he, he fits that mold. Uh, very excited about, about uh, Jared, but also very excited about Chris Hightower. These are the two receivers we were fortunate enough to sign, uh, and, and both of them are, are of the mold of the guys we've got already on our, on our practice field and on our game field right now. Chris was a very highly recruited kid, a lot like Hunter Lloyd last spring. 
Uh, so when we go out in spring, a lot of these kids uh, are filled in mid-major offers. Uh, you know, this, this kid right here had Kansas. This kid had Memphis. This kid had Tulane. Uh, he had Louisiana Monroe, Louisiana Tech. I mean, he, he had about anything he wanted and, and, and just was a meticulous kid. He wasn't jumping on board with just anything, and, and a lot of teams filled up, moved on, and this kid fell to us. You look at his defensive stats, that's what fires me up even more. 92 tackles his senior year as a safety. And that tells you how good a football player he is. Not only is he a great receiver, uh, but he's a great football field, or excuse me, great football player. Unbelievable story. You know, Chris, Chris has a, has a, has a, has a uh, unbelievable family. Uh, he's, he's dealt with a lot of adversity in his life. Um, which makes him even more impressive as a young man. Uh, not only ha a great football player, but he's a kid that's going. He's got like a 26 ACT, very sharp young man uh, that's that's going to make our our university proud uh, as a whole. And again, I go back to that. This kid's 30 minutes down the road. I mean, when you've got an opportunity to recruit a uh, an athlete like this, you, you don't pass it up. And uh, you know, he, his accolades and what he is uh, speaks for itself. I think he's a three star in just about every. Uh, every uh, website and and he he deserves to be he's a really special player again you can see how strong he is with the football again another big bodied receiver uh to add to our mix local man hayes denton very excited about hayes yeah absolutely so hayes cool 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 story about hayes so hayes is under the mold of what we what we have in jack short uh hayes is an offensive tackle by trade so the last three years hayes denton has been been a tackle for conway high school done a great job but we're projecting Hayes as a tight end. Look, we, uh, we need physical, physical play at tight end. We need guys that know how to block, that know how to do it in the trench, and Hayes is no exception to that. He came to camp, uh, worked with Coach Hollinsworth as a tight end, um, and, and obviously impressed. Uh, coach Hollinsworth obviously knew a little bit about him already uh, from being a coach at Conway High School when he was younger, uh, but, but impressed us enough to, to, to put an offer to him on the spot. Um, and he, he accepted, and, and Hayes, is, Hayes is a heck of a player. Cool thing about Hayes, though, is, is one, one neat thing, and I always tell this story, is, uh, is Hayes was a kid that, that's come to our kid camp since he was like that big. Like, it, it, it's really neat to now see him as an 18-year-old, 17, 18-year-old, about to enroll, and that's really cool. You know, that's really neat. It's like he was, he was one of the most physical kids in our kid camp, and, and now, he's, now he's getting ready to be a bear. So very excited about Hayes. And again, local, local, local. Again, that's three guys you've seen in the last five or six players that, that are within a circle radius of, of our campus of 30, 35 miles, which is awesome. Uh, offensive lineman Jalen Henderson. Jalen Henderson's from Everman High School. Uh, Everman High School has produced Kiera Crossley. Uh, it's also produced uh, sophomore All-American lineman uh, Jalen Hendricks. Uh, so Everman has been good to us. We know what we're getting when we get Everman kids, and that's tough, uh, hard-nosed football players. Jalen Henderson is, is a kid that went both ways for his high school. Um, you know, you can see his athletic ability. Watch how quick he is right here. Boom, boom, and then he knocks him down. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for quick twitch guys. Again, we, he's playing left tackle for Everman. Uh, but we project him more as an inside guy, okay? He's probably going to end up being a center for us. Watch, you know, he can do a great job on the pools right here. You can see it right there. It's pretty good. Uh, but he's going to project as an inside guy for us. Uh, he snapped a little bit, but we'll teach him how to snap even more. Uh, very athletic kid. The more athletic center you can have, the better you're going to be on the offensive line, and Jalen fits that mold. Uh, BK, Bacarius Collier. Uh, to me, one of the more exciting prospects we have Again, another in-state pro prospect from West, uh, from, uh, West Helena H Central High School. Uh, BK is a kid that we found at camp last year. Uh, just came and performed really well for Coach Boykin and his drills. Uh, again, his upside is out, out of this world. One of the better tackle prospects we've signed since I've been here. Six foot five frame. He's only about 285 pounds right now. Uh, but he's also a starter on the basketball team. Uh, never came off the field in football. Uh, you put him in a you put him in a college weight room with a with a nutrition program like we put. Uh, he's going to be a 315 pound kid uh, that you know moving forward. You know eventually could be uh, could be uh, you know a kid that could make money one day doing it. He's got that ability. He's got th that kind of feat in our opinion. Uh, so a kid that really can be a staple tackle. You know edge guy to protect our quarterbacks for years to come. So excited about him. Another tackle, just like, uh, just like BK, is Justin Larry. 
from Madison Central High School um, in Madison, Mississippi. Justin is a kid that was very heavily recruited out of the state of Mississippi. Uh, his, h him and the tackle, we recruited both of them. Well, we'll get to play his opposite tackle, who's actually signed with Missouri today, I believe. So they had two really good tackles. Um, obviously, we, we ended up with Justin, very excited about him. He is a true tackle. Again, same type of, of body as BK, a long kid, uh, has a lot of room to put weight on, but very, very athletic. Again, when you're trying to recruit tackles, you want length and athleticism, and both of these kids fit that mold. Um, both of them are great student athletes when I say that. Uh, you want your offensive lineman to not only be uh, not only be mean and physical and all that, but you also want them to be smart, cerebral type players as well. Both of these kids fit that mold. We ask a lot out of our offensive line, um, and, and these two fit that mold uh, to a T. Um, so we're very excited about Justin and what his prospects are along with BK. I think both of those are two young tackles that you can truly build your program on for the next four years. Um, that, that they're going to make you, make you right. And when I say make you right, they're going to keep the quarterback upright. Um, so that's, that's what you're looking for. Jamal Mull, uh, defensive end um, from Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, Jamal is, it, it has, the, uh, has the size you're looking for. Now this kid, this kid's what, uh, you know, the, the, the size that North Dakota State, James Madison are playing with on the defensive line. He's big, guys. He played offensive line as well. He's a starting power forward for their football team, or excuse me, their basketball team. Uh, just a kid that's up, upside and best football is sitting there right in front of him. Um, just, just a tremendous, tremendous player on the defensive line. Uh, comes from the Central Tennessee area, uh, which produced Jonathan Woodard, right? That was a pretty good one uh, from that area. This kid is similar to that. I'm not saying he's going to be Jonathan Woodard. Boy, let's hope. But he has the same body type that a guy like Jonathan Woodard has. You can see his overall length. Uh, he's going to add size to our defense. We were talking about Coach Williams and Coach Davis and, and our defensive staff were talking about. These guys we're bringing in, these three defensive linemen we're bringing in, uh, here in about two years, you're gonna, you, we're going to look good getting off the bus. Uh, they're going to they're gonna add to that mix and not only look good off, getting off the bus, but they're really good football players. Uh, the next one on the other side, I call him an, we call him an outside linebacker or bandit, uh, but truly that's that Nathan Grant, Jeremiah Gray position, Chris Chambers from the years past. Really, they're a defensive end. Uh, Jaquevius Hibbler, uh, if you look at I mean that's that's not a typo. He had 15 sacks this year um, out of uh, out of Louisville, Mississippi. Uh, was a first-team All-State guy. I don't know. I, I would have to go back and look at the record. I don't know that we've signed a uh, first-team Mississippi All-State kid since I've been here. Uh, so this is a big deal. Jaquevius is a tremendous athlete. Uh, 6'2", 225 pounds, uh, just has a knack for the football. Uh, you know, maybe the best all-around football player we signed in this class as far as just on defense, uh, just having the ability to, one, pass rush, but two, uh, get off of blocks and make tackles. Um, some people just have it, and Jaquevius has it. Um, and and we're, 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 he's a kid we pinpointed really early. Uh, you know, Coach Boykin and Coach Davis did a great job recruiting him along with Coach Sisk. Um, and he, he trusted us enough. Again, you can see how fast he is. He can run you down from the back. Just very excited about him. Third defensive lineman. Uh, again, he looked, said you want size, Jamani Gibson. 6'3", 320. Again, Jamani uh, has the same mold type as a Javius Brown. As far as size, we needed to get a two-gap guy inside, a guy that can play both. He's the type of kid, though, to me, has a nose body, so a nose body like he looks like, but he has the feet of a three technique or a four eye. He's got really, really quick, soft feet. And when you watch that, that just, that just tells you his ability to be a playmaker. So if you've got a guy with that size that can shed blocks, knock it back just like he did right there, and then go make the play, uh, you, you're on to something. Jamani's a guy that, that we recruited early on. What a great family, just a phenomenal family he has. Um, but he, he's a guy that you can truly, truly build around uh, with, with the physical size that you're looking for. He's a full 6'3", and he's a full 320. I mean, that's not a fudge statement. I mean, he is, he's a big kid uh, that's going to make us a better defensive line unit immediately. Again, he's a guy that can add depth immediate to that position. Very excited about Jamani and his prospects. Another in-state talent, Kendarius Moore. Again, a lot like a couple of the other in-state talents, back in the spring, you would have never thought we'd have Kendaris. Those offers that are on there were legit offers. He had Oklahoma State, he had Vanderbilt, he was committed to Tulane uh, and, and decided he didn't want to go to New Orleans and he, he fell off, a lot of teams fell off of him because he committed. Uh, we stayed with him. Coach Hollingsworth did a great job recruiting him. Coach Williams came here, 
uh, Kendarius fell in love with Coach Williams and what our defense is about um, and trusted us enough to jump on board. Really, really good football player. We project him as an outside linebacker. Um, you know, he'll play that field outside linebacker, but he's got the body to play inside linebackers too. To inside linebacker too. He's got the physical ability. You see he's good in the open field, has great closing speed, um, just, a, just a great football player. I mean, you'll, you, he comes from a program where uh, that's produced Justin Love, that's produced Cody Dausch, that's produced a lot of good football players from West Memphis, um, and, and they're good hard-nosed players, a lot like I was talking about Everman High School, West Memphis is that way to our program. He's exactly in that same category. Again, he's, he's one of the higher prospected kids as far as the 24-7s, the rivals, and the ESPNs we've ever signed. Uh, very, very big signing for us. Excited about him. Another in-state guy, Tamar and Wilson uh, from Bryant High School. Uh, T-Bird is what we call him. That's what he goes by, T-Bird. Um, T-Bird is, is, is a kid that is going to be an absolute big young man. He's six foot two, 200 pounds right now. Uh, he's part of the two-time state champion, uh, seven-day state champion at Bryant High School, uh, one of their leading tacklers, one of their top guys on defense, again, an all-state performer, one of the coolest kids you'll, you'll, you'll ever meet, just a soft-spoken kid. When you watch him play on the football field and then you talk to him, again, you can see him run you, run you down. Uh, when you talk to him in person, you wouldn't even, you'd, you'd be like, that's, that's the same kid, um, but he just, he has a motor about him. He's got a, an instinct. Uh, that you look for in the secondary. Again, a kid that's going to probably project as a boundary safety for us, so same position as a Juan Jackson, uh, but also could be a, a, a roll-down guy or even grow into a linebacker. I mean, he's, by the time he's done here, he's going to be a very, very big kid uh, with a lot of ability um, and, and great length. So very excited about T-Bird. Again, another in-state guy from the, from the, from the Little Rock metro area uh, that, that, that's produced a bear, and that's huge for us, and we're going to continue to hope for that, and uh, that's a good thing. Laquez Embry, again, length, size, speed. Laquez fits that bill. Laquez is one of the best looking prospects we've had on campus uh, in my time here. He's a true six foot two corner. Uh, he's a kid that you can put, put on an island and he'll make plays. Uh, uh, he is, he's, he's, a, he's a young man uh, that, that may be one of, the, one of the sweetest families I've been around. Uh, they just bleed purple already. And uh, he's a kid coming from Alabama, which, which this area produced uh, Trey Smith. You know, this area produced some great football players that have been, been in our program. Uh, I think he's no exception. He's a kid that can come in and push for playing time early because of his overall athletic, athletic ability, but also his length. He's what you want guys to look at. You can put him out there and he can guard the bigger receivers. Uh, but he's got quick enough feet and hips that he can guard the smaller guys as well. Um, just, a, just a very, very, very good young man uh, as far as prospect goes. Again, good speed and also, also has the ability to come up and be physical and make tackles. Uh, so his, his best football is ahead of him. Miles Kitt Denton, I believe he's the last one I'm going to talk about. Uh, Miles that we have as an athlete. Uh, so Miles, cool thing about Miles is, is he is an athlete. He played quarterback. Okay, so when I start showing these clips, this is what you're talking I think this is more what you're talking about right here when you're talking about a halfback. Uh, Miles can probably play about one of five, five positions. What sticks out to you is a 10-500. Um, so he is world-class speed. This may be one of the fastest young men we've recruited uh, ever at UCA. Uh, coach, his coaches think he could possibly be a 10-2-100 guy this, this, this spring. So uh, just, a, just a phenomenal athlete. Again, does have the ability to throw the football. I mean, he's, he's a good quarterback. He was district MVP uh, playing the position of quarterback. Uh, we project him as probably a wide receiver. Uh, Coach Howard, man, he's getting all of them. You know, he's just <laughs> him and him and Coach Scales will probably have a duel, a duel for this kid because uh, I think he can be an NFL corner as well. Uh, but he has great great length. Again, watch this play. You see his ability with the ball in his hands, though. I mean, he's got finishing speed, but also has the ability to reverse fields, make people miss, go score touchdowns. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's special. He's special. And, 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 and again, comes from a great family. Uh, he's a kid that, that, uh, that, that will come in and probably play right away just because he's physically ready to do it. He, he, is, he's, he, he has the size already. He's not a kid that you sit there and say, well, we got to put 10, 15 pounds on him. No, he's, he's, a, he's a guy that can come in and, and make an immediate impact. We put a lot of highlights up of him, <laughs> which is a good thing because he can really run. That's our class, yeah.
I tried to run through it as fast as possible. I literally could keep y'all here all night if y'all wanted, but, but because I get that excited about these young men, one, because, they, because they're bears now, right? One, because they're wearing purple. Uh, two, because of the time and effort put into it. Uh, but, but, but three, because of the excitement. You've got to understand what's, what's about to happen here in, in 2020. One, you're, you, you, we talk to our players all the time about, uh, about why you come to UCA. Well, one, it's about the culture and the tradition. That's number one, right? We developed long before I got here, and it'll be here long after I leave, the tradition and culture of UCA. Breed success. Breed success. Look, you don't get the opportunity we got to get invited to play in, a, in, in the FCS kickoff game without the history and success of this program. Absolutely. So, so the opportunity at hand is a big fat bullseye. And, and that's what our players ought to want to be and have a part of. Uh, we always talk to our, our recruits, you know, you're coming to be a part of culture. You're not coming to, to be a part of change. A lot of programs recruit, come be a part of change. Let's get this thing going. Well, these recruits signed on to be a part of something special. Um, and, and look, our guys are working hard. The eight guys that are already here are working hard. Those other 15 guys will be here June 1, uh, getting this thing teed off and ready to go. And then we're getting ready for August 29th. It's, it's going to be an exciting time. When you're talking about your first two week, two games, look, I, I was thinking about this on my drive over here. When I got here in 2004, if you would have told me I would be the head coach in 2020, and the first two games of the 2020 season would be nationally televised game because bottom line is, is we'll probably be at least on the SEC network, I would assume, when we play Missouri, you know, or ESPNU or something. You know, you're playing on ESPN week one. If you would have told me that, I would have laughed in your face. It's just the, the change that has happened here uh, in, the, in the last 15, 16 years is phenomenal. And we're not going to slow down. <laughs> so we're, our, our foot is on the pedal. And our foot is on the pedal to take this thing to another level. And look, I like size and Southland Conference rings, I do. And we've got pretty ones coming. Y'all wait till you see them. They're really pretty. And our players and coaches deserve them. But we're trying to size bigger rings. And we've got to continue to bring great student athletes and families to be a part of this program. The last thing I want to thank is the community of Conway and Bear Nation. Look, here's the deal. One thing, and these coaches can vouch, ask them. One thing that parents would say, this is cool. One thing that parents and kids would say whenever we, I would meet with them on exit meetings and stuff to talk to them about what their next step was, do they want to commit, what's their process, one thing they would constantly talk about is the community. They would talk about how much purple was, was around, how, much, how, many, how, many, how nice people were. And look, you may, you may have been you and it may not have been you, but it's really talking to the UCA family and the community of Conway and how special this place is. And that's a big thank you to, to each and every one of y'all, but also everybody uh, that's a part of, this, part of this deal because that helps more than anything. At the end of the day, we can sit there, we can sit there and sell something, sell something, sell something, but if the proof is not in the pudding, we, we, we can't get a kid in their family because they'll see right through it. Um, so thank y'all. Thank y'all for this opportunity. Appreciate you guys coming out. Again, this is a special deal. Uh, you know, talk to these coaches. Talk to, the, talk, to, uh, talk to these wives. I mean, it's just, this is a special thing, man. And uh, we're excited about it, and biggest things are coming. And we're, uh, we're excited about 2020 season. We start spring ball in less than a month. Um, we'll, we'll hit uh, spring ball is March 2nd, I believe, is our first day. Um, and we'll go, uh, we'll go four weeks of spring ball, three weeks prior to spring break. One week after finishing with Super Bear Saturday, I believe, April 4th. And, uh, and that'll be a big chance to come see uh, the 2020 version of the Bears, minus about 15 of these guys. We'll get them in the summer. Um, but you'll see a lot of the guys that we signed and that are coming back because 80% of our roster is back. <laughs> you know, so that's something that's very, very exciting, right? You know, so uh, good time to be a Bear. Appreciate you guys. Yes, uh, so, so that's a great question. And, and here's the neat part about, about uh, official visits and unofficial visits. This past weekend, we had three official visit guys on campus. Um, and, and, and so when I say official visits, when you come on an official visit, each, player's, each student athlete is given five official visits. So a lot of times, you, you know, if you're getting them the last weekend, you may be their fifth official visit or their third or, or whatever it may be. Uh, so we had three official visit guys. Coach Hollinsworth uh, and our staff did a great job. Coach Hollinsworth kind of runs our, our, our walk-on non-scholarship program, uh, mainly because he recruits the state, and that's where you get a lot of, most of your non-scholarship guys. 
I believe we had 27 uh, non-scholarship guys on an unofficial visit this weekend uh, with probably around 10 to 12 of those guys committing uh, to come be a part of our program. And that's a huge part. Look, here, here, here's the stat we throw to those guys. And, and Dr. T can vouch for this because he signs off on it. Uh, in, the last, in my two years of being the head coach here, I guess a little over two years of being the head coach here, uh, we have, as a staff, have put nine guys on scholarship that were non-scholarship guys. Um, so that's a huge selling point when you're trying to get good quality non-scholarship players on campus is you do take care of your own, right? You do take care of guys that commit to come be a part. And, and if they deserve it, we give it to them if we've got a spot. And so we've put nine guys on in two years. And, you know, of those 10, 12 guys that are committed to coming and continuing to fill our roster up with quality players, hopefully a couple of those guys will be talking about this time next year. Anybody else? Come on, we got something good. All right. It's all good. Appreciate y'all. You answered all the questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Let's again thank First Security Bank for sponsoring us tonight and, and having this for us. Thank you, First Security Bank. And then Fat Daddy's Barbecue. We have plenty more sandwiches over here. Please get one on your way out. It is very good. And with nothing else, we have a women's basketball game at 7 o'clock, Dr. Cummins. Women's basketball at 7 o'clock against Lamar Conference Games, so please get a bite to eat and run that way to the Fair Center. We'll see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you.